Hi there, in this video I wanted to talk about heteroscedasticity, but in this video I'm going to be talking about heteroscedasticity as a symptom of admitted variable bias. Okay, so let's think about this by means of an example. So let's say we were interested in finding out the various factors which affected the test scores or the average test scores of, let's say, school I. And as a sort of first attempt, we said that we might think that school funding might be an important factor in how well a school does on average. So in this particular example, sort of theoretically, we would expect that the effect of school funding would be positive, namely that beta 1 would be greater than 0. So we can think about some data that we might have for this particular situation, and if we sort of have test scores on our y-axis and school funding on our x-axis, we can sort of think about some sort of dummy data which we might have for this situation. So we'd expect to see, as school funding increases, test scores on average tend to increase. And if we were to fit this above model to this particular data, we would expect that it would be a straight line because it's just a linear model which we've just fitted here. But notice something else about our sort of data in our model. As school funding tends to increase, the sort of average distance which points tend to sort of be away from the line tends to increase. So we've actually got heteroscedasticity. But is this indicative of true heteroscedasticity or is this indicative of the fact that we haven't included some important variable? Well, it's actually because we haven't included an important variable. Can you think what that variable might be? Okay, don't worry if you couldn't work out what the variable I'm sort of hinting towards actually is. But the variable which I'm thinking about in this particular case is school size or the number of students which attend the school. And the reason that's important is because it's actually the sort of school funding per student that really matters because it might be the case that this top point here is actually a very, very small school, which because it's received a high amount of funding, actually has done very well. Whereas this point down here, or this school down here, even though it's received exactly the same amount of school funding, might be a very large school. So that school would have sort of underperformed. And you can imagine that as school funding increases, this sort of variance in school funding per capita is also going to increase. So you're going to get a higher variance of points uh, away from the line as school funding increases. So in this case, we've actually omitted an important variable, which is that of um, the school size. And we also expect that school size is likely going to be correlated with school funding. It's likely going to be positively correlated with school funding because schools which in general are larger tend to receive more funding. And because it's correlated with school funding, the effect of school funding, which we measure in our original model, is going to be incorrect. It's going to be biased because we've omitted this important variable. So if we were to include our important variable, a school size, in our particular model, so now we have a sort of amended model, which is test score of school I depends on school funding of school I plus, let's say, the size of school I. So this is our sort of amended model. And we could think about if we sort of fitted this model to our data, which we sort of see here in this graph, then we might expect that this model will do a lot better job of explaining the variation in test scores. It's quite hard to show in two dimensional space because of the fact that there's sort of a third axis, which is going up, going away, which is in theory orthogonal to the other two. But just to say that it might sort of represent, might be represented by some sort of squiggly line which actually explains a lot of the variation in points uh, or a lot of the variation in test scores in terms of not only school funding, but school size. And this new model actually will have perhaps eliminated the heteroscedasticity which we observed in our first model. So note that this is a situation where we would have, by our sort of traditional test, the Broich pagan test, the White test, the Goldfeld Quant test, we would have found that there was a degree of heteroscedasticity. But we reasoned that that heteroscedasticity was actually being caused by an important omitted variable. 
The word important here meaning that it was correlated with some of our independent variables which we include in our regression. So in this case, heteroscedasticity wasn't indicative of, let's say, true population heteroscedasticity, but was indicative of emitted variable bias. In the next video, we're going to talk about how serial correlation can similarly be symptomatic of emitted variable bias. I'll see you then.